Hello and thank you for watching. My name is Jesper. I'm a sixth year medical student and in this video I'm going to talk about primary immunodeficiency disorders of T cells. This is part three following my previous video where I talked about primary immunodeficiency disorders of B cells. And then there was part one where I talked about the innate and the adaptive immune system as a whole, which was more physiology related. If you haven't seen those videos yet, you could take a look at them if you would like, since it's a good concept to understand. In general, patients with immunodeficiencies due to lack of T cells or poor functioning T cells are predisposed to opportunistic infections. Since the B cells are largely dependent on aid from T cells, patients with T cell deficiencies will have reduced both humoral as well as cell-mediated immunity. Let's quickly define what an opportunistic infection is, since this will be a reoccurring theme. So an opportunistic infection is an infection by either a bacteria, by a virus, or it could be a fungi, or any other commensal organisms that usually do not cause disease in healthy individuals, but they become pathogenic when an individual's immune response becomes lowered. They seize the opportunity to infect when the defenses are low, hence opportunistic. Also patients who are elderly or those on immunosuppressive therapy, such as taking corticosteroids or other immunosuppressive drugs, such as for example methotrexate or cyclophosphamide, can also be affected by opportunistic infections because they also have a lower immunity. The primary immunodeficiency disorders of T cells that I will go through briefly in this video will be as follows. Severe combined immunodeficiency disorder, MHC class 2 deficiency, D. George anomaly, hereditary ataxia telangiectasia, as well as Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. We will start talking about severe combined immunodeficiency. It is a profound group of rare immunodeficiency disorders that are inherited and many of them are linked to gene defects within the X chromosome. Also, a mutation within JAK3 on chromosome 19, as well as a mutation of chromosome 20, can cause severe combined immunodeficiency. So we remember that severe combined immunodeficiency is inherited. Most of the causes are X-linked, but also certain mutations within chromosomes 19 and 20 is known to cause it. Since most of the mutations are X-linked, more boys are affected than girls. The infants born with this disorder seem healthy at first, but they are very quickly then predisposed to opportunistic infections. And if they do not get proper treatment, they will die within the first years of life. The life-saving treatment for these patients is a bone marrow transplant from a histocompatible donor, like for example a sibling. Gene therapy? can be successful for treatment in certain types of severe combined immunodeficiency. And this is when healthy gene is inserted into a stem cell of the patient through a vector as a carrier. Then the restored stem cells could potentially develop into healthy immune cells, specifically T cells, restoring their function and numbers. The next immunodeficiency disorder we will talk about is MHC class 2 deficiency. It is also called Bayer lymphocyte syndrome type 2. It is inherited autosomal recessively. As the name implies, immune cells of these patients have deficiency of the MHC class 2 molecule on their cell surface. I talked about MHC molecules in part 1 of this video, however mainly about MHC type 1 molecules. Those were the cells sort of passports, which makes it recognizable to other immune cells and their presence on virtually all nucleated cells surfaces. The MHC class 2 molecule though is usually only located on antigen presenting cells. The consequence is that there is an impairment of antigen presentation of the antigen presenting cells, as well as defective maturation of CD4 lymphocyte populations also called T helper cells. The affected children in MHC class 2 deficiency easily gets infected by bacteria, viruses and fungi and other opportunistic infections. If not treated, 
the children often dies of infections, especially viral infections. Unfortunately, the only curative therapy currently is an allogenic hematopoietic cell transplant. Next, we will talk about De Georgi syndrome. This is a primary immune disorder that is due to a congenital defect in the organs which are derived from the third and the fourth pharyngeal pouches during human gestation. The epithelium of the thymus as well as the parathyroid glands are derived from this and are affected. We remember that the thymus is where the T cells are maturing and we also remember that the parathyroid gland is responsible for regulating the calcium levels in the blood by producing parathyroid hormone. When we understand and remember this, the pathophysiology of this disease becomes logical. Most patients have a micro deletion of chromosome 22 and for the diagnosis it can help to detect this deletion. The affected individuals also have characteristic features such as hypertellurism, which means their eyes are separated widely. Other features is that their ears are sitting low and the filter of their upper lip is shortened. Patients may also have cardiac defects. Their T cells are often deficient, but it varies depending on what degree their thymus is affected. They often present with hypoparathyroidism and therefore low levels of calcium. This can be severe and lead to jitteriness or even to seizures. Treatment is done by treating the underlying health defects that might come with the disease, such as surgery for potential heart defects, supplementation of calcium and vitamin D for hypoparathyroidism. If the patients have a severe thymus dysfunction, then that patient might require a transplantation of thymus tissue or a bone marrow transplant. Let's continue with the next primary immunodeficiency disorder, which will be hereditary ataxia telangiectasia. It is inherited autosomal recessively and is due to mutations within the ATM gene located on chromosome 11. This ATM gene is important for helping to control cell divisions and DNA repair. More specifically, it encodes for a protein which helps controlling cell division and DNA repair. In the cerebellum, cells are especially affected by the lack of these ATM proteins. And we remember that the cerebellum is the part of the brain that coordinates our movements in regard to our position. This is why these patients have difficulty coordinating their movements early on in life. This wobbly gait that they develop often develops when the infant is about 18 months old. Ataxia is what we refer to as coordination problems. Telangiectasia, on the other hand, refers to dilated or disrupted vessels that are visible on the skin's surface. And many children develop these vessels dilated in the face early on in life. Hence the name hereditary ataxia telangiectasia makes sense. There is variable deficiencies of T cells as well as there can be IgA and IgG deficiencies in these patients. They also can develop respiratory and sinus infections which are frequently severe. Treatment is generally aimed at controlling symptoms and potential complications such as those severe respiratory infections we want to prevent falls because they're gait, or we want to prevent immunodeficiency and subsequently infections. The last disorder we will talk about will be Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. This disorder is X-linked and due to a mutation of the WAS gene, which codes for a protein called the WASP protein, so WASP. The affected children often have thrombocytopenia, which means that they have too few platelets. The platelets are also individually small often, and because of this thrombocytopenia, they cannot clot their blood properly, and therefore they can bleed excessively. Since it is X-linked, also here many boys are affected. They also typically develop eczema and are predisposed to opportunistic infections. Their T cells are defective and the cell mediated immunity gets progressively worse. Unfortunately, the only curative therapy for these patients is a stem cell transplant. To memorize Wiscott Aldrich syndrome, I try to remember the word rib. 
R for rash, I for infections, and B for bleeding. It helped for me. Since the children typically present with bleeding, rash, and frequent pyogenic infections. That was it for this video. It was a lot of disorders that I went briefly through. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. I hope it was of some help to you. And if it was, please subscribe. See you in the next video.